Hello there, my friends, and welcome back to the Brightworks. Today, I've got a game for you that comes near and dear from my own heart because it was a game that I just played pretty recently. As some of you might know, there's a little bit of a story that goes along with this, so I'm going to tell it to you right here as we get started in this match today. As some of you might know, I do have a Discord channel that I have a link to down below in the description in case you'd like to join up and uh, be a part of the Brightworks community on more than just the YouTube platforms. Not mandatory, of course, but there is in that Discord a whole host of lovely people, people like Argon Wolf, who are very talented at modifying this game. And so what we've got today is a slightly tweaked game of Supreme Isthmus. Supreme Isthmus has the geothermal in the bit of a forward position right here, makes it a little bit interesting. And I'm going for a cheeky little strategy. So the unit tweak that we've got today changes the cataphract. Uh, for those of you who don't know what the cataphract is, you uh, are probably an Armada player. <laughs> and it's probably pretty rare that you see them. There was a video recently where we uh, covered a cat we, we, we covered a game where cataphracts became important here. But uh, otherwise, usually they're not very useful. And uh, one of the th one of the comparisons that I always draw is that they look a whole lot like the droid tanks, the uh, the Trade Federation Alliance tanks from Star Wars. Maybe I'll put a little graphic on screen there. Uh, and uh, well, Argon Wolf, that, uh, that clever SOB managed to program in such a way that the, the the laser tanks function a lot more similarly to the uh, to the laser tanks of Star Wars. So we enabled it, and that's my whole strategy for this match, is to go all the way up to T3 hover tanks and try and get those out on the battlefield. So what we've done here is I've taken the sea lane position, and I have no, uh, no intent of ever getting in, in the water here, at least, well, yeah, I mean, I guess never getting in the water as uh, going for hover tanks. I guess they just float right across the top here. So Aleo, the brown player here has decided to, uh, or rather, well, I, I, I asked him and very kindly has obliged me to go into the water from this starting position right here. After seeing that other match where we had the player spawn up in this location and get right into the water, I really think this is a very viable strategy. Going for a, a naval bay right here really does allow you to get into the water quick enough that you can still contest over here, but also it means that you're going to have a secured economy on the land, and of course you can always just buy a constructor off of one of your teammates and continue expanding your land-based economy. Not to mention it also means you're contesting these metal spots right here, which are quite valuable, as opposed to over here, there's not really anything to guard out in the water. There's not a huge incentive to keep a force mounted over here. The most ideal place to keep it would be over any sort of metal that you can extract, right? So I don't think this is a, uh, I think this might be a strategy. I was going for a little bit of a cheese here just to get up to T3 as quickly as possible, but I think there's a valid strategy somewhere in here where you go for, uh, you know, you go for, and uh, you, you go for the starting economy right here and you get into the water and you, you do all these things to make sure that this player has a chance to get in the water and then later on the sea lane player can contribute using T2 or T3 forces. Interestingly, my opponent over here, Nuke Therapy, <laughs> has uh, gone into a vehicle bay and has sent a couple of Garpikes across the map here, crawling under the sea and towards my base, which is actually a really interesting start. A bit of an unconventional one, but it does do quite nicely against the uh, the particular build order that I'm going for here. So I'm going heavily into uh, Eco here. You can see I start up that energy chamber, try and store up some, uh, some, some lithium ion power. We're going to also go into a bunch of build power, and you can see I've got a ton of wind turbines queued up as well. I've got this constructor working on some build power over here, and then I've got the constructor building the metal extractors over here as well. A lot of economy expanding all as quickly as humanly possible. Now, the reason I chose to cover this game uh, is also because things do not go as planned. <laughs> there was a lot of uh, back and forth, and it actually ended up being a really cool game. So I figured it would make for a great cast to not only show you this wonderful mod that uh, Argon Wolf has built for us, but also showcase the match. Riot Tank here, produced by Mod X. Oh, how rude of me. Sorry, I should introduce Gof, our blue team leader here, going to be spawning in the uh, the southern lane, playing as the uh, well the blue player, the blue team leader here, but also playing in the the choke point over here in the the little oh what do you call this? I guess the bay, playing in the bay area. <laughs> Going to be playing as a uh, Cortex Navy, so getting those Riptides out, very, very nice. Hopefully going to be seeing a couple more of those here, and eventually going to be able to get into the water. Yellow player David Blade Street Magic has gotten a ton of Dolphins out and is ready to start contesting. I think do three Dolphins could definitely dive on the Riptide. Might even be able to dive on the Lab, but I don't think that'd be a bad idea here. Trying to snipe your enemy's units very early on, stopping that snowball from happening, usually is the best way to prevent any sort of uh, any sort of engagements that can spiral out of control, right? It's very easy to lose an engagement accidentally on Navy and just suddenly all your units are in a bad position, the flanking damage is not as uh, potent as you maybe hoped it was, and eventually you just kind of run out of steam. It's very, very likely. It's one of those reasons why 
res subs are so important as well if you're going to be going into Navy. Over here in the middle of the map, we can see it's a 2v2. Thorough, clean, solid. <laughs> just, a, just a good old-fashioned 2v2 here. It is a vehicle player versus two bot players. Uh, well, uh, oh, actually, it's two vehicle players. Vehicle players for my team versus two bot players on their team. There's also bot transitions now coming out. You can see the bot lab was swapped over here by the purple player, Zaphod, and we still have the bots here for profits. Doing an excellent job of contesting the middle, though, and you can see denying this metal extractor is really huge. They're pressing forward and almost about to deny this one as well, meaning that that's a solid eight metal per second not going into our economy. And uh, while not necessarily going into the blue economy, at the very least preventing it going into your enemy's economy is probably well worth it. Commander's being sacrificed here. This is all fairly stock standard. Going into a couple of advanced solar panels. Don't mind seeing that whatsoever. We can always use those to fund a T2 transition later on if we need to. Otherwise, using them for a little bit of energy conversion in the back line. Mostly just ecoing up here. And you can see, handing out T2 constructors to whosoever has paid for them. And making sure that everybody gets their, uh, their T2 comeuppance. A little bit of aggression over on this side. Those guard pikes were eventually killed by my commander. Uh, well, sorry, one of them was captured by me. <laughs> I figured, why, you know, waste not, right? Might as well capture it and send it back at the enemy here. So I captured one of those guard pikes, and I'm going to send it under the water. Uh, and you can see the queue I've got for it is up, over, across, and into the enemy's back line. Hopefully to do a little bit of counterattack damage with the very same unit that hit me oh so hard. Shut down a couple of my metal extractors, which is quite annoying. It's going to slow down my economic spiral. It also killed my constructor that was supposed to be working on my geothermal. That's going to come back to bite me in the future, as I didn't realize that that had happened. <laughs> Too many things all at once to memorize. Well, not to memorize, but to uh, keep track of here, and I guess spirals out of control occasionally. Janus jumping on top of all of these artillery trucks. This is a pretty good engagement. Uh, Janus has got to be happy to be firing into uh, missile trucks and artillery trucks and all sorts of stuff, but Zaphod's commander is there too. Could get a cherry D-gun off right now. Oh, uh, not quite. Okay, gonna pull the commander back, but it's all right because we did kill a whole lot of those missile trucks and whatnot. Missile trucks haven't spiraled to the point where they can just uh, solo contest a whole bunch of grunts or pawns or anything like that. Really important to get those out in really big numbers very quickly if you're planning on going for that kind of strategy because they need to be spiraled. Uh, otherwise, they can be jumped on top of by relatively cheap units. They get, uh, they get hard countered by pawns and grunts and even ticks on occasion. You have to produce a lot of ticks, though. Usually pawns and grunts are a better counter. Uh, and, uh, I mean, unless you get enough of them, right? You need, you need tons and tons of them, probably 40 or so missile trucks to really, really thoroughly, easily counter any of that sort of stuff. Very tricky. Nicely done capturing this metal extractor here. That's tons of metal going back to Zaphod, and you can see that that presence on the map is just growing and growing using the commander to reclaim here because we don't have the res bots anymore there is a lavender res bot out here for different army it's contributed by dr frog here trying to repair trying to reclaim trying to do whatever it can here missile trucks doing a decent job of engaging however they can but the janus every time it fires doing so much damage here and dovi is just uh or Do dove maybe it's dove dovia <laughs> maybe it's just dove Either way, hot pink player here in a lot of trouble on the front line. Mod X has a sizable army here, but a lot of it is Wolverines and such, which can't really push in and engage, right? They're meant more as a, uh, a siege breaker unit. So we definitely don't have as much army as we really need on the uh, on the front lines in order to fight these forces. Geothermal was taken though, and that's quite nice. No geothermal for the blue team yet. So that is a nice little bit of energy, even if it is about to go down here. I do believe Janus connecting both of its twin rockets, more rocket launchers firing. Wolverines and uh, shell shockers all over the place. The geothermal does go down, but it was nice while it lasted. You can, of course, always resurrect that if anybody makes a technology transfer there. Transition, rather. You can see I've gone up to T2. At this point, I made a couple of twitchers. I planned to hand these out, but then I realized the front line just needed support, and I probably had the economy to support, so I might as well just start producing a whole bunch of, uh, whole bunch of fiends here. I think I boot up fiend production here in just a little bit. Didn't quite get to go to the economy scale that I was hoping for. By this point, you can see how slow these things travel. By this point, the Garpike had finally made it across the map here, spotted instantaneously by Nuke Therapy, which is quite uh, well done on their behalf. At this point, I didn't even remember this tank was happening. <laughs> oh, some shurikens will be sent over to deal with that. Well, shuriken singular will be sent over to deal with that. Oh, never mind. <laughs> and it will get a kill. Wonderful. Okay, so the captured guard pike has been well worth it here. 
Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> David Blade kindly reminding me that I had forgotten to requeue the Geo and uh, was failing to provide sufficient forces on the front here. Yeah, things were really spiraling pretty, pretty solidly out of control. Dove here, running out of uh, running out of options. The lab is going down. The commander is taking shots. Janus is trying their best. They do tap out here. Still had a commander to fight with, though. I took as quick as possible to try and get that commander into position, try and do something with it. But I don't think ultimately hardly anything was done. Commander does go down, and there's tons and tons of units now heading into the back line. My commander is going to be forced to be pulled to deal with these medium tanks. Really the only option we have. Shurikens are now in production by the Maroon player here. Going to try and paralyze as many of these tanks as possible. It's a very solid response here, especially considering there's no missile trucks, at least not pushed up. Uh, actually, no missile trucks at all. So yeah, shurikens are going to be wonderful as far as shutting down a lot of this and making sure that it all gets uh, cleaned up quite efficiently here. Commander going to blast all of these to pieces. But they did snipe my T2 constructor, which is really a pain because that was uh, kind of the plan here. <laughs> kind of the whole point. T2 units are coming out just in the nick of time here from Jay Jolani, though, and that is going to save our front lines at least a little while. See the Janus is paralyzed away, and the Hound's getting a really nice trade after those, uh, well, after those poor souls can't move anymore. Shurikens, man, they are one of the great comeback, comeback mechanics. They can shut down virtually any push if you give them enough time. And, uh, yeah, no anti-air here means that those shuriken are going to be able to dismantle this front line. Well, I guess they'll be able to uh, shut down the front line. It's really the hounds doing the dismantling. Rocketeers will be blasted away, though, for the most part. That is a uh, that is a, a relatively solid hold from an otherwise very bad position here. You just might have noticed that I uh, dumped a whole bunch of metal to J. Jolani. At this point, my production standards were... Uh, not good. <laughs> we can take a look at my economy. You can see only about 250 energy per second coming into my economy with 3,000 metal in the bank. This is not an example of how you want to tech up here. Should have gone for a fusion reactor. I think I clicked the wrong one. Uh, you know, I, I play Armada and the uh, the fusion reactor and the advanced fusion reactor for Cortex look pretty similar in the build menu, unfortunately. And I think I, uh, I, think I might have clicked the wrong one there. <laughs> Going for an advanced fusion reactor on 250 energy per second, not exactly what I would recommend, per se. Either way, though, excellent job pushing back the front line here with these hounds, making sure to continuously be aggressive with them. It's not hard for hounds to be efficient in taking trades against T1 vehicles, T1 bots, any of that. So it's really nice to see that these were included here. Could be even more effective with the radar bot just to make sure that they can fire at their maximum range. You can see the range of these uh, indicated here by the red bar, but you can see that their vision is just the uh, the little pink outline here. And so maybe these are a better example. You can see there's about a third of their total radius is actually outside of their line of sight. So you can make them tremendously more effective by just the inclusion of a single radar bot with this big cluster of hounds. Either way, though, they're durable enough that it's not usually a problem because they can just take a hit and manage to get within vision range anyway. Vision uh, range, rather, anyway. And you can see just how quickly they dismantle any of those T1 bots right there. Tons of Rocketeers just went down, sending any fiends that I could make over as well, trying desperately to make sure that there's some way to cover for these bots. Absolutely cannot afford to use them. Lose them, rather. Can definitely afford to use them. Whoa. Sorry about that. Getting a little choppy here. Not exactly sure what happened. Somebody made a big cue. <laughs> Fiends do collide with that army. This one serving as a distraction, pulling all the forces of Zaphod back. Misdirection is an important tool. Massive naval engagement over here. It looks like Yellow decided to pull the trigger and is now sending in all of the dolphins to collide with the blue forces. Blue didn't really have a meat shield in front of those destroyers, and so they're actually taking the main brunt of the damage here, which is really a pain. Those destroyers are so expensive, you really don't want to lose them if you can at all help it seeing those go down does give me some confidence for this naval battle over here. I wasn't paying too close attention to this battle over here, uh, but it certainly looks like the yellow player is more than happy to take that fight, and I think that was an excellent judgment of exactly how much power that their navy had here. Res subs, ah, we do have them eating up the wreckages over here. Very nicely done. Yeah, those resurrection submarines, I mean, they, they determine whether you win or lose the naval fight here. Now we're running out of steam as the yellow player. You can see that the reinforcements are trailing behind here and it means that we're now in the opposite situation where the destroyers from yellow are now diving in while the dolphins are kind of trying to gum up the forces of blue here, but it's just, uh, it's a bit of a mess. <laughs> Everybody firing in a different direction here. Dolphins trying their very best. A little bit of uh, shuriken play as well to stun some of those dolphins. Not bad whatsoever. Frigates going down the dolphins though is a, well, it's a positive trade for the dolphins. 
And you can see left with only three, make it four frigates. Well, three frigates and a destroyer. This uh, this this trade could definitely be positive if we if we manage to eat up the wreckage. Basically, whichever player manages to eat up the wreckage, and both of them are trying. Hounds at this point have been well punished, though. Mauser are out on the field, and those are really difficult to deal with. I was still producing a whole bunch of fiends over here. You can see the Twitchers. One of their superpowers is the fact that they can produce fiends, which are just such a powerful unit on the front line. They really can't be overstated just how powerful those fiends really are. They can when well when they connect with any sort of T1 units, they're just overwhelmingly devastating. The forces here have been built up by Aleo quite nicely as well, and the shurikens do dive in on top of this. Oh, they were a little grouped up there, so they did all go down. But still managing to catch two of those frigates, not bad. Better than nothing. And now the Elsaw can move in for the engagement here. Both players tiptoeing around each other. Neither one wants to lose the lose the engagement here, and I think that's very, very wise. Well done by Aleo to make sure to build up the forces so that he can contest without losing all too much. Getting a res sub out there and eating up these wreckages would be quite nice, but also got to make sure you get your uh, your res subs worth of metal out of it. <laughs> 200 metal for a res sub, so 650 lying on the floor. It'd be worth it, but maybe not as pressing a concern. Sending in the fiends against the Mausers. But really, the commander snipe here. Commander goes down. Zaphod's commander, that is. It goes down right in the middle of the map. Takes out a couple of those Mauser as well, leaving a big old hole. You can see the ruins of the commander as it degunned him down whatever it could. <laughs> Yeah, those fiends, they can burn down a commander super, super quickly here. Yeah, this is really nice. Using the res sub to eat up all these wreckages. The destroyer eventually pops it, but man, that res sub definitely paid for itself at the very least a couple times over. Full-blown T1 production. You can see we're going massive maximum dolphin production. Going even into a fusion reactor on the, well, the, the land. <laughs> a land lover's economy. My advanced fusion reactor almost finishing up here. 92, 93, 94. Very close to finishing that up. I uh, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I don't know why I decided that that was the decision that I should go for, but I guess 16 minutes, 40 seconds into the game, my uh, ish, more or less, the fusion reactor will come up on online. And yeah, I mean, jumping from 1,000 energy per second up to 4,000 energy per second, not a bad, uh, not a bad upgrade, certainly. And overflowing that energy to my teammates is certainly going to be quite useful as well. Not to mention that I've also transitioned into duck production. It's another thing that these Twitchers can produce. I mean, talk about a unit that can do it all. They can produce the duck, which is great as far as amphibious units go. They can produce the fiend, which for uh, frontline engagements. And you can see I'm already sending out little harassment parties with the, these ducks. I basically just want to make sure that Nuke Therapy doesn't feel comfortable keeping all his forces in one place. Want to keep Nuke Therapy as stressed out as possible. <laughs> Dolphins trying to make a big commitment here, but it looks like they're not going to be able to do the job. Yep, being paralyzed down here. Shuriken shutting down where to, whatever dolphins they can. Dolphins are, are weird in the sense that they can technically shoot at those uh, shoot at those shurikens, but they're not going to choose to when there's a better target, i.e. the uh, frigates right here. And I really think a more complex structure might be in order. Going for more Elsa might be the right idea here. Maybe even going for destroyers. We do have a couple of skaters queued up here, those anti-air, uh, very, very light anti-air T1 units. Not bad whatsoever. Marauders are now building, though, and you can see the orange player sending the Marauders all the way across. Ooh, yeah, a little chuggy today. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Some sort of uh, some sort of update happened, I suppose. And you can see the Dolphins making their way downtown. They uh, they walk all along the seafloor. Quite nice. Ducks, ducks. <laughs> They're a funny little unit, but they are quite powerful, and you can see I'm just sort of sending little harassment parties all over the place. I want to I want to constantly be making sure that nuke therapy doesn't feel comfortable just positioning out on the sea. He has to constantly have some sort of some sort of vision, some sort of patrolling unit, some sort of diversion away from the the main target here of Aleo. These dolphin are building up in quite massive numbers though. David Blade doing a great job of building some forward radar as well, making sure to give a substantial amount of vision. See that now he knows basically exactly where the entire navy of the blue team is parked. That's roughly how big it is and kind of what the defenses are looking like. This is quite nice. We do have the static, uh, what is it called? Jellyfish? No, anemone. Static defenses here. The offshore static defenses. They, those do quite a bit of damage. Well worth investing in. Sharpshooter army is also built up and we all know just how devastating those can be. Firing away at whatever they feel like. Every click of their sh their uh, their sharpshooter sniper rifle is one dead unit. <laughs> At least until we get into the T3 game. Now, they are falling under fire here of a lot of those 
Mauser, which is kind of unfortunate. They're very expensive to lose, and uh, yeah, not not a big fan of uh, losing too many of those to the artillery right there. Obviously not the uh, intention, but you do have to keep a very, very close eye on any of your sharpshooters. Most of them have gone down here. A little bit of friendly fire with the rocket spiders. Uh, no, I guess the rockets pass through those welders. Interesting. Smaller hitbox on those than you would imagine here. Nicely done. Moving the army in to shut down some of the forward uh, aggression, forward forward construction that Nuke Therapy was going for. Is Nuke Therapy thinking about T2? Uh, Nuke Therapy is upgrading the economy here. Interesting. Let's see that we've got uh, metal extractors. Wow, this is a legitimate problem. Sorry about that, folks. Not sure exactly what's uh, what's going on as far as that goes. Maybe there's some sort of Windows sub-process happening. You know how that goes. Anyways, Marauders are moving across the map here. Yeah, that's really bad. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to verify my game files after this. Bear with me. <laughs> Marauders are getting ready to move across here. You can see that I've started up my T3 lab as well. I am so eager to show you guys these tanks because I... Frankly speaking, I would I would put my uh, you know put my reputation on the line to say that this is a great idea as far as improving the cataphract goes. The cataphract is just in a very sorry state as it is right now. I feel like it uh, I feel like it could use a little bit of love, and I think this could definitely be the tweak that allows it to get into a uh, you know a proper T three position, right? Scout planes now going out here. And you can see the dolphins again engaging here. I'd love to see these split a little bit more. Just take a wider engagement just to make sure that the splash damage from all those artillery guns isn't connecting here. Nice little scout sent across the map here and the ducks are holding the line. I noticed they were sending uh, they were sending rovers to scout probe us. And the ducks do fire a laser beam making them pretty good at countering all this. And now you can see the Marauder rush hitting blue like a truck here. Starts up a bunch of Scorpion batteries, but I think it's just too little too late here. Uh, yeah, I mean, one of them's gonna come up and online. Maybe. Oh, maybe. It does come online, gets a single shot off before Gof is going to be in a lot of trouble here. Commander gets jumped on immediately as well as all the build powder, build power rather, and that is gonna be Gof going down here, the commander at the very least, as well as a whole bunch of advanced metal extractors. Definitely a massive hit to the economy. The Marauder are now rushing by and you can see just how much damage these bad boys can do. They're so quick, they're so durable. They have anti-air, they have rapid fire Gauss cannons. I mean, what's not to love about the Marauder? <laughs> they do spy the economy here. Spy, uh, turning into an old man. They spy IQ's economy here. Going to peel off the Marauders to not lose all of them. Oh, that is so nice. Excellently done here by Cricket. Showing us exactly what that, uh, that, that late game economy can do if you just micro it properly. Going to get the Marauders into the back line here microing them as best as possible to bring down anything that they can. There's a bulwark up here as well as a scorpion battery to try and shut any of these down, but the marauders are split nicely, and I think they are going to take down this with no problem. <laughs> Your greed is unparalleled. Excuse me, sir. Unrelenting. Moving the commander in. Oh, need some good D-guns. One, two, three. Oh, a fourth. Oh, not going to get it. Marauder will get away. Oh, it even gets the commander there. That's unfortunate. Yeah, there's not really any defenses back here. The Marauder is free to fire away over there. Nicely done. My ducks that I sent a long time ago. <laughs> now walking into the... Uh, walking into the back line here. You can see I'm complaining in chat that I never even got to move the tanks into the front lines. All the, all the Marauder aggression has already killed everybody back here, so there's no... Uh, <laughs> I feel like I never even got to use the tanks. Bunch of bombers dropping their payload. A couple of them hit planes right there. That's quite funny. Uh, they didn't manage to target anything super expensive here. But their deaths, in their deaths, they do manage to take out a whole bunch of energy converters. I'll take it. Oh, I'm, I'm so eager to show you guys these upper tanks. I know that was the whole point of this. I'm going to make a big deal about it because I love the way that they look now. If you're a big Star Wars fan like me, and I know a bunch of you are, I, uh, I think you're going to really enjoy what happens when these tanks hit the fields. See our first engagement over here. I know there's other battles I'm neglecting, but I really want to show you this. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Tell me that isn't the CIS main battle tank right there. That is just beautiful. The little recoil from their nozzle as well, moving back and then fire it, like going back into position. Oh, it's just wonderful. It's like, a, I mean, it's just a turbo laser. The Trade Republic strikes again. I think this is just such a beautiful way to make these tanks work. 
absolutely massive shout out down wolf for managing to come up with this because this is just so wonderful the fact that they i mean this makes them a viable unit suddenly because they otherwise they we, we would have seen these tanks fire and then two minutes later they're ready to fire again right they're just not very good at all whereas now they actually feel like a substantial t2 unit t3 unit rather it feels like they can actually be used for you know some sort of some sort of legitimate combat here they're not wasting all their shots everywhere and it feels like they do a decent enough damage to justify making them i think i think this has a lot of uh, a lot of merit i'm not sure how interested the the dev team is in rebalancing the cataphract i don't know if that's on anybody's radar but it sure as hell is on mine <laughs> oh look at them go pew pew you can almost imagine the little droid pilot sitting inside saying roger roger fire pew 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 Razorback sort of stealing the show here, but it's all well and good. Oh, nice little bombing run there as well. Taking out a bunch of the sharpshooters. Very nicely done. Easing the pain of those sharpshooters here. Now, they may need tweaking. That's uh, that's something I will admit. They may need a little bit of balancing. It does feel like they do a lot of damage from very long range. But, I mean, they are a T3. Maybe slightly less damage, and this would be, uh, this would be justified as far as a, uh, a rework goes. Ducks on the right-hand side find nothing. <laughs> David Blade finally won the naval battle over here. Res subs eating up all of this juicy, juicy metal. 10,000 metal worth sitting around on the ocean floor over there. Destroyer just flying sideways there for a second. Pulsar even built out here. Wow, that's uh, that's quite impressive. We don't, re we don't usually see the land-based defenses guarding the seas, but... No, I mean, I guess it makes sense. I just can't peel my eyes off of them. I, I've got to keep watching these tanks. Just look at how cool that looks. I mean, you could just imagine a little Jedi running around, jumping on top and cutting the top off, right? <laughs> Am I fanboying a little too hard? I don't think so. I think this is justified. I feel like if this was the way the cataphracts actually worked most of the time, they would be, they would be way more used. I think they would be, uh, I think, I think, I think this makes them quite a bit more usable. Razorbacks now hitting the front line and with all that damage done by bombers, done by marauders, done by basically everything, you can see that the blue team now in a bit of a crippled position. 700 metal income for us versus 238 for them. It's a very, uh, it's a very tricky position to be in, a very difficult one to come back into. T2 Lab has been burned down here. All of the advanced fusion reactors have been popped. This is a, uh, this is a, this is a game over situation. But I refuse to call it until the very end because it means more time to look at these awesome battle tanks. I will be enabling this in all further matches that I ever possibly can, by the way. <laughs> if you're interested in tuning in to uh, any of the future streams, Tuesday or Saturday on uh, YouTube or Thursdays on Twitch, you can find links to all that down below as well. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be enabling these because, man, what an awesome unit. Takes me, takes me all the way back to watching Star Wars The Clone Wars for the first time and seeing the uh, the battle tanks firing away, right? There's that epic scene from the Bad Batch where uh, Hunter, is Hunter his name? No, not Hunter. Crosshair? Yeah, Crosshair. It's where, uh, where Crosshair fires down the barrel of one of these tanks, blows up the top of it. It's like every, every sniper's fantasy. <laughs> the barrel kill. Anyways just me okay it makes them so much better because they just they don't overkill as badly as they used to but the problem was that they also didn't do very much damage because they just they i mean it was so slow to fire their their weapon last time uh but you know uh their their normal weapon or whatever you want to call it it's so so slow to fire i think this is definitely a really good change I'm super happy with it. Let me know your thoughts down below. Is it too powerful? Is it OP? I'm sure uh, I'm sure you guys all have some opinions and I want to hear them all. Anyways, thanks a ton for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you in the very next one. Peace out, folks. Oh, there we go. Show graphs. <laughs> Peace out, everybody.